This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're here at Mobile World Congress 2017 with Sequence Communications with the CEO, Georges Karam. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks for being with us as well. Well, it's exciting. Last year we talked about Monarch. This year you've announced Monarch SX. So tell us a bit about what's new with the new product line. Absolutely. I mean, Monarch is really a thin modem. This is what we announced last year, which is essentially about uh, getting CAT M1 and NB1 uh, technology uh, in, in a die which is as small as possible, as cheap as possible, to deliver really the thin modem as a value proposition. With Monarch SX, this is something that we put in place, I mean, after announcing Monarch, is to make a derivative of chips, which is we take the same IP of Monarch, in other words, from LTE, it's the same. It's exactly the same IP, the same software, but we added to the modem uh, a Cortex-M4, sensor hub, a graphic display, plus as well some media engine. And essentially to give to the developer, to some application, in one solution fully integrated, not only the LTE technology, but also the horsepower you need to build some sophisticated application. What are some of the benefits of having integrated silicon solution versus a discrete solution? I mean, obviously the benefit could be, you know, price is the first one, because if you are integrated on a single die, all this technology, you avoid using two chip solution, uh, but also size and power consumption and I would say easy of use. Because one of the good things about this is now Sequence is able to give you a full solution, ready in hand, you know, where you have the application software running on the uh, Cortex-M4 with all what's needed to run, you know, your media devices or your, or your uh, uh, use the graphic, and at the same time get the LTE ready and, and work. What type of devices will be built using the Monarch SX core? Any kind of application, I mean, could be from Wearable device where you have an integrated wearable, all the horsepower. Any device that needs really horsepower in addition to the LTE connectivity. If you take a device which is a simple, let's say, metering, you know, if this meter it needs just only the light processor and just only communication um, uh, modem, then you go with Monarch. Now, if you go to an application where you have maybe a small screen to manage, some interfaces to manage, uh, you know, uh, towards even wearable where you run a sophisticated operating system, then better to go with Monarch SX. So uh, George, what's the significance of the first LTM data call in Europe with Telefonica? W why is that important? Well, you know, I mean, Sequence, we focus a lot on the US market originally, and we continue to consider it as the first mover in terms of LTEM. Uh, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, the three carrier will be moving fast, and we are going to see network happening mid this year, the worst case, I tend to say. Europe is a little bit lagging in terms of the uh, LTE in general. I would say it's a little bit behind the US, but it's accelerating with LTEM. And we see today like, someone like Telefonica, who's moving, but you see as well Vodafone, you see Orange, uh, many other guys moving. And for us, it was an opportunity to expand beyond Europe, leveraging as well our headquarters that we are based in Europe, you know. And uh, that's why we engaged with Telefonica uh, to show that we are going you know, beyond the United States in terms of deployment. And we're seeing as well activity, not only in Europe, but also in Japan, Korea, uh, China. So it's really going uh, on a worldwide scale, you know, all this LTM. All the carriers are adopting this. There is no doubt about it, it's happening. It's just only a question of speed between one carrier, the most aggressive guy in the US, and the other guys kind of maybe six months or one year behind the US market. Can you compare and contrast the different types of application adoption or vertical markets you're seeing adopted in, in Europe versus the US? Well, you know, the applications are more or less the same. You know, you see this everywhere. And, and the beauty about Sequence, what we are offering here in our solution in Monarch or Monarch SX, we are able to support CAT M1, but as well NB1 in the same chip. We are able to support as well what we call it uh, worldwide SKU. In other words, in the same hardware, we can manage all frequency band needed by any carrier, whether in the US or in Europe. And obviously at the beginning you are going to see application that will be physically present in one region, like it's an application in the US or in Europe, but very quickly we are going to see mainly in the tracking, for example, tracking application, uh, you know, things cross border. If you are, you know, tracking your luggage, you would like to see it, you know, maybe you are in the US, you are in Europe, maybe you are in China and so on. So moving between carriers and kind of roaming 
this is really the next thing to happen. And, and we have all the technology to make it happen with zero cost, uh, incremental cost, I tend to say. Well, Sequence is also a, a leader in LTE Cat 1. Can you talk about some of the uh, evolutions of the uh, LTE Cat 1 over the past 12 months? Well, you know, I mean, Cat 1, we, we, we pushed this at the beginning. I mean, we were the first mover even. We, we used to say we almost resurrected Cat 1, all, didn't yeah. say invented because it was part of the standard, but Sequence was the first guy to push it to the market as an LTE solution for m 2 m application. Uh, so we have many design wins with this. We have uh, a module maker like Gemalto ready with many customers behind it. And uh, this is really going now to mass production this year. A lot of our IoT revenue this year, most of it will be happening with Cat1 technology. cat M will be more towards the end of the year and next year, you know, in terms of devices. So, and, and over time, you are going to see applications that they need a little bit of speed. They have some maybe camera, maybe voice, more in the home security application. Uh, Cat1 will be the sweet spot for them. Uh, all the other applications they need, they don't need all the speed of uh, Cat1, and they can stick with a few hundred kilobits per second or even a few tens of kilobits per second with NB1. That will be uh, using LTM for this. George, Sequence has quite an impressive group of partnerships. Can you talk about some of your key partners and why that's important? Absolutely. I mean, you know, partnership is really, uh, I tend to say, the, 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 it's, it's key for a company in the size of Sequence. You know, when you are a small company, it's very, very important to play the partnership angle in order to create, to, to add to the technology differentiation you have you have, you know, your way, your go-to-market strategy, or sometimes from technology point of view. So we have, I qualify it many, many kind of partners. Obviously, the carrier is our first partner. Yeah. Playing with Verizon, playing with at and and the Telefonica and others, it's very important because they are, you know, the enabler of all this market, and we need to be sure that our technology is there. They trust us. It's technology certified. We can go there. Then you have the other technology partner, which is, I call them, module partners uh, and module partners in general why it's very important in this space because the IUT market is very fragmented and uh, and you have a lot of application it's not about winning one project where you have 10 million units it's going to be about 10 project or even maybe 20 project half a million unit each and addressing all this when you are small is very complicated the best way to get it is to get module partner and as we are speaking today we have Jamalto a model OEM partners Huawei, a model OEM partner, Fibocom, another one. And we have as well the ODM partners like Foxconn, USI, Wistron. All those guys help us to address the market from, I would say, you know, go to market strategy. And the third uh, uh, kind of partners are technology partners. And here we have, for example, the partnership with ST that we announced recently, ST Micro. But essentially, ST, you know, they, they, they offer their CPU platform for all many IoT applications. They have thousands of users using their platform. And obviously they need to add connectivity and get amped in connectivity. So playing with them to integrate the solution end to end is very important. It opened for us the market to all those thousands existing customer to get them there. We can play with them as well. We are missing you know, the GPS when you offer a complete solution. We'd like to go to our customer and tell them it's not only the LTE, but all what you need around it and some of the components are coming from ST or other partners. So this is also important. We have very good uh, partnership as well with the Skywalks, where they provide the, the, the PA and the switch, the front-end module, yeah. to, come, to have a comprehensive solution. So those are the kind of you know, partners that we are pushing and we rely on them. Well, this week you announced Huawei and you mentioned earlier, what's the significance and opportunity of partnering with Huawei to advance LTE, IoT? I mean, it's, Huawei is a very important win for us. Uh, first of all, because Huawei, they do their own chip. Yeah. So, and they do an NB-IUT chip, and selecting sequence is really, by itself, say, means a lot for us, because this means they trust that we have something completely different that they don't have, first of all. Second, you know, Huawei is a big user of the big names, you know, that, that we know them, that they are our competitor. And we were shortlisted to the other big guys, and they select sequence is also a, another, I will say, uh, testimony for, for sequence uh, technology. Uh, Huawei is also important that they play in the m market like delivering the module, so they come and compete with Gemalto or, or Fibocom. But Huawei also is device maker. So when you win a Huawei, you win it not only to make the module, but also the device 
that Huawei will be taking to the market. So for us, it has big potential, obviously.